what is happening guys welcome back to another episode of the fresh Hope for better you podcast i'm your host as always alvar goulet and i'm extremely excited to dive into today's topic because it has a very special place in my heart and it is something that many people struggle with today and that is mental health and with it being the month of may and it is mental health awareness month I do want to dive into this topic and tell you guys a little bit about why it is very important to me and why it has such a special place in my heart and also dive into what we can do with actionable steps uh, to improve our mental health and to be there for one another uh, because you truly never know what's going on in someone's head. Uh, And firsthand experience I have with that is when I was 16, my best friend killed himself. Uh, He shot himself in the head behind his family's barn with a 12-gauge shotgun. This was uh, very unexpected. Uh, It definitely caught everyone off guard because he was a happy-go-lucky guy. Uh, He never talked about suicide, and that is why it is so scary because now when you hear people talking about suicide and stuff like that, uh, those are the type of people that tend to not do anything about that. It's the people that don't say anything that have those thoughts eating away at them deep down that end up actually, you know, doing something about it and taking their own life, which is why I'm always, uh, you know, trying to reach out, talk to as many people as I possibly can, check in with them on a daily basis, uh, seeing how they're doing emotionally because life is hard. I've talked about this quite a bit is, you know, life will beat you down if uh, you don't build up some sort of mental strength and mental capacity to be able to handle what life is going to throw at you. Uh, You can really get down in the dumps and, you know, you can start really having these bad negative thoughts and depression and all this other things that many people suffer with today. And it is very hard to dig yourself out of that hole alone. So month of May, make sure you guys are reaching out, checking in with your people and always just trying to be there because you really never know uh, what someone could be going through. And with that being said, I want to dive into when I was 16, when my best friend killed himself. It was a very... uh, Very weird time, uh, for sure. Uh, My best friend had just gotten into some serious trouble at school. Um, Don't want to dive into that too much, but he got into trouble at school. He went home. His parents uh, were really uh, hard on him, I mean, which, as they should be, for getting uh, suspended from school and potentially expelled. And it was... uh, I think it was right around uh, 2.30 when they made an announcement at school saying that all the teachers needed to check their emails, and I overheard that over the intercom, and I was kind of curious. I ended up going to work that day with um, one of my buddies, Jared, and we're sitting there at work, and then all of a sudden, I got a text from my best friend's little brother, and he's like, oh, did you hear about Brett? And I was like, yeah, I, I thought I had heard about him getting suspended and stuff like that, and I left it at that, and then my buddy Jared came over to my workstation, and he's like, dude... Brett killed himself and I was like what and I had no idea and it just completely hit me with shock and then within a couple minutes I was trying we were going to walk up and talk to our boss and see about leaving and my mom showed up there and my mom was bawling her eyes out and uh, that is simply because Brett was basically like a son to her because the amount of time I'd spent with him growing up Um, and when I saw my mother I like knew it was real I knew it wasn't a joke or something like that and it really fucked with me really bad. Um, I hadn't really, you know, had many mental health issues or I didn't know about it because I was so young. I just thought, you know, everyone gets sad and stuff like that. And then when I heard this and that Brett followed through and actually ended up killing himself after never saying anything about suicide, uh, it really hit me hard is you really don't ne- ever know what is going through someone's mind. And one of the biggest takeaways I had from that whole situation was that you really don't know what is going through someone's head. Someone could be severely suffering deep down and just having these negative thoughts continuing to eat at them every single day. Uh, and they may put on a smile. They may act like nothing's going on, but deep down they f- they're they going through fucking hell. And it is something that, you know, you really have to be aware of. Um with your friends and family and stuff like that. So if you know anyone going through a hard time right now, just take the time out of your day to reach out to them. All it takes is a simple phone call, a text, say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Uh, How's everything doing? And, you know, this could be in business relationships too because a lot of entrepreneurs and stuff like that, it is a lonely journey. And if you don't have your people uh, or surround yourself with like-minded people, you may, you know, go through a lot of hardship and stuff with all the loneliness that being an entrepreneur you know, has, I'm not saying 
all areas of life, uh, it doesn't matter what your occupation is, doesn't have some sort of, you know, loneliness to it. But choosing the entrepreneurship route is very lonely. But for everyone else that isn't on the entrepreneurship route, still check in with your family and friends. Make sure their well-being is, you know, all right. <clears throat> because the last thing you want to do is be put in a position like I was at 16 where you didn't get that chance to check in on your friend anymore because they are gone. Your friend, your family member. Because all it takes is, you know, like my buddy, one quick pull of the trigger and it's done deal. It's over. The life, you know, that's all she wrote. And it sucks because he was 16 years old, hadn't even started living his life yet. And I don't want to see that in anyone nowadays because, you know, everyone's capable of changing their life. Doesn't matter what situation you're in right now. There's always room for improvement. You can always continue to work your way up and get out of whatever place you're in. And some people don't see that. So sometimes you have to check in with them and, you know, try to, you know, talk positively, you know, pick up their spirit, pick up their mood, tell them that they can do things, give them actionable steps, which is why I do this podcast. It's basically it's a self-development podcast, but a lot of it is focused on you know your mental health and stuff like that and giving you tips and ideas and actionable steps that you can go out and start doing today to start improving your life. And that is where I found my sense of purpose is, you know, that day when I was 16, I didn't know why that happened. I didn't understand why all these things, you know, were happening during the time. And it, I really didn't understand it until I started my self-development journey and really realizing what working on yourself on a daily basis, consuming the right foods, exercising, you know, having those social interactions really do for your mental health. And it is tremendous because now in today's day and age, everyone's so caught up behind the screen and social uh, platforms and all this, all these other things that we lack the social interactions. And I can tell you that I can notice on days where I'm working behind my computer all day long, not getting many social interactions. I'm craving it. I need to get out of it. I need to get out of my head. So if you're someone like me that struggles with that and doesn't get very many social actions, an actionable step that you can do today is just simply going out and having a conversation with a stranger. I tell a lot of people that I coach uh, doing this, getting out of your comfort zone, it's not the most comfortable thing, especially because we are so used to just you know communicating through texting, email, social media, and stuff like that, that people really don't understand that you know we need those face-to-face interactions you need to have these conversations because i know when i'm texting or emailing or something like that it's way less um you know personal than actually having a phone call or even a zoom and on top of that the best one that you could possibly do is having that face-to-face interaction which is why I'm always like, all right, let's get on a Zoom meeting so I can see your face. I can see your emotions. I can understand you. It also helps with business. You, It's hard to, you know, with me. Okay, so I want to go back. A lot of people think I'm an asshole. That is because I'm very direct. I am straight to the point. I'm here to get shit done. At the end of the day, I'm here to win. And a lot of my teammates and team members and people that work for me and stuff, you know, they can take it wrong. And I've learned over the years is that, I, if it's a serious matter that I need to, you know, address, it needs to be either via phone, in person, or Zoom, because my texting is very direct, straight to the point, and people tend to think I'm mad, pissed off, or they take it the wrong way. I mean, even for girls, if, for example, when I'm joking around because I'm serious and, like, they always think I'm serious and, like, they can't tell that I'm joking, they may take something the wrong way. It's hard to understand the emotion behind a text because there's no context there. They don't understand that. And so the face-to-face interactions are truly what make, you know, life worth living. Um, And a lot of people suffer from not having those social interactions, especially with everyone getting to work remotely now that they struggle. They don't necessarily get all the social interactions and things like that on a daily basis that we need as human beings. Before technology, how did you, you know, interact and talk to one another in person when i was a kid we had a phone i would dial the phone number call them on the phone i didn't have texting or anything like that so when i wanted to hang out with the guys the only thing i could do is text or you'd ride down the neighborhood and see where all the bikes are at you'd go hang out with them now it's so readily available which is a positive thing like there's you can utilize technology for amazing things nowadays but it also does take away from the social uh, aspect of things the day like the day-to-day basis where you're talking to people in person and things like that that is why having a conversation with a stranger is on my power list every single day 
And it's because it is a habit of mine to do that. But if I take it off of it, it gives me that chance to not have that social interaction. And what, making a friend every day and making some sort of, you know, interaction with someone, making that day person's day better. You know, I want to leave that person's, you know, that conversation I have with that person as that was the best conversation. Converse, whew, that conversation was the best one that they've had all day and that brightens their mood so that they can continue to pass that along. It's like the domino effect. You know, if I make this person's day, they're going to feel more obligated to go make someone else's day, make a better impact, you know, do something with themselves, and which is why it is super important that we do have these social interactions. And I can definitely see the days that, you know, if I'm working all morning long by myself, deep work. If I don't have some sort of social interaction, I'm craving it. By the time it comes to go to the gym, I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's get in the gym. Time to go get a good workout in. Time to have these social interactions. That is my go-to. A lot of days I'll force myself to go to a coffee shop just so I can simply, you know, do my work and stuff like that. And I can have a conversation, be around other people because sitting in your house by yourself with me being a single male, the only thing I have to talk to, only person is my dog. And guess what? She can't talk back to me. She gives me sass, but she can't talk back to me. I can't carry on a conversation. So I crave those social interactions, which is something that, you know, a lot of people need. And that is one thing I can recommend, an actionable step that you can do today is go have a social interaction with someone. Go have a conversation with a stranger. You never know. Making new friends is always great. You, If you want to continue to progress in your life, you're going to have to find new people to surround yourself with because you are simply the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And if you struggle with being alone, the best thing you can do is simply start making better friends. Yes, your old friends may be you know, the people you grew up with and all those things, but if you're looking to move your life forward and those five people aren't, then you had to start finding new friends. And that's where I've been the past few years is just trying to make more friends. I have made my friends that I used to associate elevate themselves. So when I do give them the time of day here and there that, you know, they are doing better and stuff like that. But in order to get to where I want to go in my lifetime here on earth, I have to surround myself with like-minded individuals. There's nothing wrong with my old friends and stuff like that. I still love them to death, want nothing, you know, but the absolute best for them. If they need anything from me, I, they can always reach out to me. It's just those aren't my top priorities. My top priorities are winning, developing an amazing team to crush it in business, and changing the world. And that is why I do this podcast and share all of my experiences, my knowledge, everything I possibly can. I don't leave anything off the table. This is going to be a lifelong project, and I've committed myself to being a lifelong project. I will never give up working on myself and trying to become better every single day. And that was actually something I read in the Daily Stoic. I practice stoicism every single day, and I read that the other day, and it asked if I am willing to make the commitment the lifelong commitment to bettering myself and becoming the best version I possibly can be. And I could truly say when I was writing my journal that I am committed to becoming the best version of myself. I will make this a lifelong commitment because that is just who I am as a person. There's people out there like me and I've found my group of people that are like that, but the people that aren't, there's nothing wrong with that. You can you know, live a comfortable life. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just not me. But if that is you, make the most of that life. You know, do what you can. Take care of your physical health. Take care of your mental health. And take care of your friends and family. And make sure that this month you are checking in with them on a regular basis. Making sure that, you know, they know you're there for them. And that they know that you care. A lot of times I get so caught up in, you know, coaching and, you know, business and work and stuff like that. That I don't really necessarily check in with their well-being. I see how they're doing that day, whether that be with their nutrition, their workouts, you know, uh, you know whether they got all their actionable steps done that they need to do to continue to work forward with their goals. But sometimes I struggle with actually saying, how are you doing? Like, actually, how are you doing? And sometimes, you know, I've heard of people from first form that check in with someone they haven't heard from a long time and that they use coach or whatever. And they actually reach out to him and they had been contemplating suicide. And uh, one of my coaches actually did this and it really made a big difference and it really hit me. It's like, man, yes, you're checking in with them with, you know, the things that you have to do that, you know, you're getting paid to do is checking in on their fitness, nutrition, stuff like that. But to actually care enough to see how they're doing with their well-being is where it really matters. And 
that's what I've been really doing this whole month of May is asking people, how are you doing? What is going on in your head? What have you been struggling with? What can I help you with? And not expecting them to pay me for anything, me just simply caring about people. And that will get them to buy into you more. And not like that's what I'm looking to do. I'm simply just looking to make sure that they are okay. Because the last thing I want to do is go back to when I was 16 and hear that that this person committed suicide. Or you'll never be able to talk to this person again. Because that is simply one of the worst feelings that you could possibly have. And back in the day, I really never knew about checking in on anyone's well-being. So when my best friend commi- committed suicide, uh, when I went to go see his mom and dad and family, I was talking to his mom, and his mom was just bawling, and she's like, why did he do it, Oliver? Like, why? And I didn't have an answer. And that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to you know, deal with in my life is not having an answer why my best friend killed himself because I truthfully had no idea what was going on in his head. And I used to think, you know, I could have prevented this. I could have done X, Y, Z, but I can't go back and fix that now, but I can fix what I'm doing today and check in with those people because those people, I can potentially help them avoid going through that situation. And the thing is when he, I know when my best friend committed suicide is he didn't know the trickle effect and what it was going to do to everyone around him because it doesn't just affect yourself. You have no idea how many people's lives you've made an impact in that would miss you, your family, friends, anything of that nature. All of those people truly do care about you, but since we live in a go, 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 like everyone's got their own shit going on. So you might not be in the forefront of their brain, but at the same time, like deep down, These people do care about you and you truly never know who you're going to affect by doing that. It is something that a lot of people don't get is how many people you actually do affect. Um, Something that it was hard for me to wrap my head around and actually come to terms with was the fact that, you know, if you do commit suicide, like it is selfish because you aren't just affecting yourself in that situation. You are affecting everyone around you that knows you that's ever met you um, and you're going to put a damper on those people's days and their mental health and stuff like that. So that is the most selfish thing you can possibly do. And it is honestly just lazy because yes, you may be going through a lot of, you know, hardship and stuff like that. And you have these thoughts, but you can fix it. There's actionable steps to fix your mental health because millions of people have done it before. Millions of people have had the thought of killing themselves. Millions of people have overcome that thought and turned out to become something absolutely great and changing people's lives or just you know living a regular life because they took the actionable steps so anyone can make the change it just all depends on if you're willing to or not in 2023 mental health has become such a big topic nowadays because like i said before so many of our social interactions come from behind a screen and this all starts with our parents and our children and youth getting stuck in front of these screens at such a young age because it's that much easier for a parent to stake a kid in front of a screen instead of giving them the time, effort, and energy that the kid actually needs and desires. Uh, instead, they're, it's, they're quick to jump the gun and just throw a tablet or a phone in front of them. I see it personally with my nieces and my nephews and stuff like that. I'm not going to throw my sister under my sisters and siblings under the bus, but... Whenever I spend time with my siblings, my nieces and nephews, I'm always having to tell them to put the fucking phone down, put the screen down. I'm here and I'm willing to give you the time, effort and attention that you desire that your parents or whatnot will not give you all the time. But when I'm around, I make sure that there is no screens around. I'm doing something active with them. I am trying to spend the time with them and be present in the moment because I can't control when I'm not there and what my siblings, you know, do with their kids. That's not my area. But when I'm there, I make sure that they are not spending time behind screens because what causes these problems is there's just instant dopamine all this time. And kids get so caught up in this and, you know, having this validation of dopamine all the time that when life gets tough, you know, their go-to is just go behind the screen. 
they're not looking to go outside and play. They're not looking to go have social interactions, play with other kids. They're looking for the instant gratification and the dopamine spikes that, you know, are so readily available through technology nowadays, which is, you know, it is a good, it can be a good thing when used correctly. But in our youth, that is something that is getting worse and worse and worse. And you hear it now, like, you know, I got my first phone in sixth grade because I was the only kid going to school. My parents both worked, which, and I played sports and I had to know, they had to know when practice got over. They had to know when to pick me up and all these things. But now kids are starting to get phone phones and tablets and stuff like that as early as, you know, four, five, six years old. And it's like, why the fuck do they have a tablet? Why do they have a phone? Why do they need that? They truthfully don't. It's just easier for the parents to shove them in front of a screen so that they can, you know, go do whatever they got to do as a parent. But that all comes down with planning. You can, you know, do what you got to do every single day. People have done this for many, many years uh, up until, you know, it became such a common thing to have all these, you know, tech, all this technology and all these other things readily available. Uh, they, you know, they were able to make it happen. When I was growing up, the last thing my parents did was like, you know, throw a phone at me or a tablet when I was upset. My parents gave me the time, energy, and, you know, gave me the attention I needed. And also, they just stuck me outside. Go play outside. Go do this. Go in the woods. Go break some sticks. Go, you know, ride your dirt bike. Do something. I know not everyone has access to, you know, doing those things, but you can always go outside and play. You can always find a friend. And that all just comes down to the parents. So parents need to really take this into consideration because the next generation's fucked. At this point, they're absolutely fucked, especially with all the agendas and stuff that the government and all them are pushing out, trying to make us weaker as, you know, Americans and just in the world so that they can control us. And, you know, it's the easiest way to do is stick people in front of screens, you know, make everything readily available, make us fat, make us lazy, make us, you know, not driven to do anything so that they can continue to, you know, have control. Cause you know, if you're fat, you're lazy, uh, you sit behind a screen all the time, you see all this, uh, you know, the political agendas that they push at you, it makes it that much easier for them to gain control. And one thing is the government should not be in control of you. They should, you know, be there to assist and help out and make sure things are running smoothly. They shouldn't be, you know, controlling us. And the fact is, they don't have our best interest out for us. They want us to be, you know, below average or even average. They want us to be caught up in the system, which is why, you know, when you you go to school, they get you ready to work in a factory or work some nine to five job. You go to college, they put you in debt so that you spend the rest of your life trying to dig yourself out of it, which is why they push it so heavy. And like Andy Frisella was talking about on his last podcast is you don't need a college degree unless you're going into a specialty field like doctors, engineers, or something along those lines that you need specific education upon. Other than that, I'm sorry to say, but if you're going to school... For the most part, you're just fucking wasting money. And unless you got mommy and daddy money that's paying for it, you're fucked. Because I still have a little bit of student debts and I've been busting my balls for the last four years to try getting out of it. And that's 100% on me because at the time I was uneducated. I was told to do X, Y, Z, go to school, go do this. You'll get a good job and, you know, run the plan. Fall into their, their uh, you know, their sales funnel and, you know, you'd be fat, weak, lazy, not driven. And that way you just... uh. You know, spend the rest of your life trying to get out of debt and you're basically owned by the government at that point when you can't do anything because you simply have to pay all this money back. And that puts a lot of stress on everyone too now is like people are expected to, you know, go to school, pay for college and that does a lot more than that like, you know, you have to set yourself up for success throughout life and a lot of people think that the only way to reach success is by falling into this trap of, you know, going to school, going into massive amounts of debt. And then they wonder why they, you know, end up having all these mental health things because they have tremendous amounts of bills and all this other stuff that they have to pay every month. And yet they're doing something that they honestly don't even like to do. And they don't get paid enough money to do it with how many bills and, you know, the price of everything going up with inflation. It just makes life a hell of a lot harder. And so basically an actionable step you can do with this with, you know, families, parents, and you just, you know, 
if you're a younger person about to be going to college or anything like that is really think about what you want to do. Start learning online. Start getting educated in other ways. You don't have to go to college. And for parents, you really need to start being hands-on, giving your kids the time, effort, and attention that they need and start teaching them other things besides, you know, being behind a screen, being on social media, doing all these things. Because even myself, with me being pretty heavy into social media and stuff like that for my business and just, you know, trying to create an amazing brand that helps change people's lives is I can notice when I've been on social media way too long and it literally drains me and I'm like, dude, I have to get up. I have to do something. Get me away from this fucking screen. That's not real life. And then every time, you know, I'm working and stuff for a couple hours then I'm like, look outside or, you know, I look, you know, anywhere and I'm like, man. This isn't just, this isn't really real life behind the screen. This is just some made up shit that, you know, allows us to connect and there's useful tools for it. But at the same time, like the screens and technologies take away from real life. And that was like a huge eye opener for me is when I started to become aware of this and creating awareness around what you're doing and why you're doing it is one of the best things I've ever been able to do for myself. So I highly recommend you just start creating awareness around what you're doing on a daily basis, why you're doing it, and really think, is this worth my time? Is this actually making a difference? Is this moving me in the right direction? Because if it's not, if it's really just, you know, draining you, it's taking away from, you know, what you're trying to achieve in life, if it's hurting your mental health, then you need to really limit it. Like there's that, there's a way on your phone where you can limit your screen time. I have that set up and I follow it for the most part. There's times where I tend not to because I get caught up in work, but just the fact that I'm able to limit that and that they make that available can be a huge help for anybody. So if you are someone that struggles with, you know, being addicted to social media and stuff like that, I can highly, I highly recommend you limit your social media and you will watch your mental health, you know, improve because I've done this personally. Like when I was spending, you know, a few hours a day on social media compared to less than an hour a day, my mental health started to improve. As soon as I start feeling drained, exhausted, or anything like that from being on social media or behind a screen for too long, I simply just walk away from it. Go outside, get some sunlight, do other things besides behind, sit behind a screen and wonder why I'm feeling like shit. So I want to dive into what helps me with dealing with my mental health. Every day I work out. I work out multiple times a day. As of right now, I am on day seven of 75 all. So the Live Hard program, which is part of 75, well, 75 Hard is part of the Live Hard program. There's three phases, one, two, and three. I started phase one this last Monday. Uh, So now this is day seven. Uh, We are currently on on Monday. And I've started to build up a tremendous amount of momentum. The weekends in between because I was traveling to St. Louis, going to... uh, going to Vegas for my brother-in-law's bachelor party, which was awesome. Um, That was like a good reset because that was actually the first like real vacation I've had in over four years uh, because I've been so dedicated to self-development, working on myself and, you know, trying to make shit happen that I actually finally got a vacation and it felt amazing. And when I got back, it was a great reset. Like, all right, I know why you're doing this. So you can have nice vacations. You can do all these things. Now it's back to the grind. And now I've started to build momentum and it's all hands on deck. So I've been working out twice a day, been absolutely crushing it. That is one thing that has helped me out a tremendous amount with my mental health is having that release every single day because throughout the day we're getting built up with so much stress, anxiety and stuff like that from work and all, you know, the weight of the world on our shoulders because we have to get these things done. We're trying to move forward with our lives that we need that release. And if you don't have the time, which you can make the time it's you life will never get not as busy as it is now for you you have to schedule in time to work out so simply scheduling in a 10 to 15 to 30 minute walk you know in the middle of your day or at some point in your day will help with your mental health especially if you're able to get sunlight sunlight does a tremendous amount with you know your mental health and stuff like that if you just take this you know this today and you go out and think about it and be in the sunshine i guarantee your mood will start to get better That is something that I highly recommend. And in Michigan, now that it's starting to get sunnier and stuff like that, my mood's even getting better. So that is something phenomenal that I highly recommend is just taking a simple, you know, 10 to 15 to 30 minute walk every single day, getting sunlight in right away. If you can get it in the morning, even better. That's going to make your whole day better. 
But if you can't get it in right away in the morning, take it at your lunch break. Take it after work. Do something to re-energize yourself because all throughout the day, if you work from home, you work from a computer or anything like that, it's draining you all day long. You need something that refills your cup in order for you to continue to go home. So if you have had a long day at work, you're feeling really drained, simply go for a little walk. That way, when you go home to your family, your wife, or anything of that nature, you have the energy because just because you have to go you know, work all day long doesn't mean you don't have a responsibility to go home and be that man or that woman that your family needs every single day. You cannot let your kids down, and that is what's wrong with, you know, so the concept of, you know, men and women, they go to work all day long. They come home to go to their kids, and they're so exhausted, tired uh, from their work day that they don't have the time, the energy to give to their kids or their family or their spouse, and that is simply because they aren't doing something to refill their cup. So if you have a little gap and, you know, you're able to do something active, get outside, go work out or something like that to rejuvenate you, to refill your cup so that you can go home and pour out and do what you're supposed to do and take care of your responsibilities as a father, as a mother, as a significant other. You need to do that because everyone needs a little reset throughout the day to refill their cup, you know, bring back that energy. And if you can find the little, you know, space of time in between, you know, leaving work, and going home and to your other responsibilities, find something that rejuvenates you and refills your cup. That is what's going to help out your mental health. And then that's going to have a trickle effect on your family, especially your kids, because you're going to have the energy to give your kids. So you're not just going to stick them in front of a fucking screen. And it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier for them because they aren't just waiting to, you know, be on a screen. And guess what? They're going to be fucked up later in life. You know, the kids that are on screens from five years, the age of five years old, when they get into high school, they're going to be so caught up in, you know, the screens and technology and stuff like that, that they're not going to know how to live a regular fucking life. They're not going to have, you know, the social skills to go and have have that talk with someone, have any sort of social interaction. They're, that's where we're lacking. In 2023, one of the biggest things is social interactions. With COVID just passing the last three years, they took away over two years of our social interactions, and we wonder why our youth is so fucked up. We wonder why mental health is such a big deal, and that is simply because they took away the social aspect of things, and that is something that the screens and technology has a huge factor in. It's simply because we aren't getting those social interactions. Those are not helping us by any means. That takes away from life itself. So that's actionable step number one is find something that refills your cup every single day. So that way when you go home to your other responsibilities like your wife, your husband, your family, you have the energy to give them. You can make a difference in those people's lives. Starting today, you can do this. Take that 15, 30 minute walk, rejuvenate, bring yourself energy, and then go out and fucking make it happen. Be that change for your family. Change the trajectory of your family. If your family's been struggling lately, guess what? It's up to you. You are the chosen one. You are the only one that is responsible for helping this. You start the domino effect because guess what? You are, if you're listening to this, you're more than likely the alpha in the family. It doesn't matter, man, woman, you are the leader because otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. So it is on you. You need to lead your family. You need to show them the way you need to take responsibility for yourself and being that example, being that leader, being that person you wish you had, be that person and develop that mindset that you're going to do whatever it takes to change that. Because I look at families and I can see whether they're struggling or not within 30 seconds of looking at them because one, if they're struggling, they're most likely out of shape. They're consuming very unhealthy foods on a consistent basis, heavy in sugars and carbohydrates and stuff like that. They don't exercise and you can just see it, their happiness levels, the way they hold themselves. Like, and then you see a family that's active, that's healthy. They walk differently. They talk differently. They look differently. You can notice this. You can look at a healthy family that loves in one another that absolutely crushes it. You can look at a family that's scraping by and they wonder why they're scraping by and they're unhappy and they're dealing with all these things. And it's because they don't pursue any sort of personal excellence. They aren't trying to become better. They aren't trying to take care of their physical health, which is directly correlated to your mental health, which is why with, you know, the number one thing I do that helps me with my mental health 
is working on exercising and taking care of my physical health. Because when you're taking care of your physical health, it is connected to your mental health directly because it is so important because if I can, when I used to be fat and overweight, couldn't even see my dick, I would look in my mirror and I couldn't look at the man in the mirror for more than two seconds without being disgusted. Now I look in the mirror and I'm proud of the man I am. I am confident. And that right there says a lot. If you can look yourself in the mirror and be like, I am a confident person. That is going to change your life. If you've worked hard enough taking care of your physical health, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I am confident. That is going to directly correlate to your mental health. That's going to give you more energy. It's going to allow you to do more things. It's going to push you forward. And that is why I'm a nutrition lifestyle certified personal trainer because I know that it all starts with your physical health. If you take care of your physical health, everything else will start to line. Everything else will start to become easier. Everything else will start to take care of yourself. And it simply just starts with exercising every day. It starts with watching the foods that you eat on a daily basis. And with that being said, I want to dive into some essential foods that can help boost your mood. Food number one is fatty fishes that are high in EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA have a huge uh, benefit for your cognitive function, uh, also with your metabolic functions. Um... But with you, your cognitive function, that's basically your brain health. If your brain is cloudy and it's all these other things, it's probably because you've been consuming a tremendous amount of, you know, omega sixes. And you want to, the only way to actually make it better is by consuming, well, with like to combat the omega sixes, because a lot of the foods that we consume are high in, you know, oils and stuff like that, that are high in omega sixes. And instead of consuming less omega sixes, we want to make sure we're consuming uh, more omega threes to out balance to balance that out, so that you know we're feeling better. Our cognitive function, we're going to have less brain fog, and that's going to help out a tremendous amount with your mental health. Another one is nuts and seeds, very good for your mental health. Uh, and then probi- probiotic rich f- fermented foods, uh, like sauerkraut, Greek yogurt, kombucha, or what I use is I use an Opti Greens 50 from First Form. It is a uh, low temperature processed green superfood powder that is packed full of digestive enzymes, which help break down my food, and probiotics, which help in the aid in supplying my gut with healthy gut bacteria. Uh, then you can look at stuff like legumes, beans, lentils, chickpeas. Uh, then there's also berries, dark leafy greens, avocados, which are healthy uh, fats. Um, and it all comes down to your gut health. Um, taking, putting healthy nutrient dense foods that are good for your gut health in your body is going to increase your mood because your gut is actually responsible for 95% of your body's serotonin production, which is, you know, basically your happiness. If you want to be happy, you want like serotonin, you know, if you got a lot of serotonin going, you're real happy and stuff like that. And I've noticed when I used to eat like shit, I was not very happy. That is simply because I was putting, you know, processed GMO, uh, heavy and sugar foods in my body and my body was rejecting it because we are not supposed to be eating those types of foods. It's very simple. Yes, here and there you can, but to have that be majority of your diet says that you don't care about your body and your body sees that and it's going to reject it. It's not going to be producing serotonin. It's not going to make you happy, which is going to be directly correlated to your mental health. And that is why it is such a big deal and why am I why I am a nutrition and lifestyle coach is because I understand this firsthand is that, you know, you get the energy that you put into your body. So if you're putting shit, you know, uh sugary, you know, processed foods into your body, then what do you think you're going to feel like it's going to be the same thing like you're going to put shit in you're going to feel like shit you put good healthy quality nutrient dense foods into your body you're going to feel good because your body's you know getting the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that it needs to function properly and when you're doing that it's going to be able to produce serotonin it's going to increase your mood it's going to make you feel happier it's going to make you feel better and it's going to give you more energy too because if you're eating a bunch of you know sugary uh processed foods you're not going to be getting quality energy you're not going to want to have you know the you're not going to have the motivation or you know the drive to want to do anything because your body's going to be sitting there struggling to break down this bullshit food and so it's going to be working just to break down this food which is going to be taken away from your energy and food is supposed to give you energy food is energy 
A calorie is a unit of energy, and you're putting calories into your body, you're getting energy. You're supposed to be have, being able to use that energy, but if you're using shit energy, you're not going to be able to use it. So making sure that you're taking care of you know, the foods that you're putting into your body on a daily basis is played such a big role in my mental health. And I know it plays a huge role in a lot of people's mental health because I'm currently coaching over 50 people and I talk to tons of other trainers and stuff like that. And you always see like when people are starting to get in shape, they're feeling better, like their moods are better, they're happier, they're healthier. And it's all directly correlated And with us living in America. I'm not going to lie. We live in the land of a bunch of fat, lazy bastards. There's so many people that are overweight that struggle with their health and stuff like that, that, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. But if you just start taking little action steps every single day in order to move towards becoming a healthier individual, your life will change because I'm a walking example of it. And there's millions of other people out there that are also walking examples of it. So if you don't believe that, just type in, you know, uh, correlation between the foods that you eat and your mental health and your physical health tons of different studies will come up and you'll be like wow this is true so i can you guys can fact check me all the things i'm telling you is a hundred percent the truth because i've done my research i've been educated i've taken courses i am certified and i know this stuff because this is my life And it is my mission and purpose in life is to educate people and be able to help them change their lives because otherwise my life is kind of a waste of time. If I'm not able to change people's lives and make them become the best version of themselves or at least, you know, open the door for them to walk through it, then I'm lacing my life. Yes, there's a lot of people that I've opened the door for and be like, dude, do this, this, and this and walk through it and your life will be better. But guess what? If they aren't willing to take that step through that door, There's nothing I can do about it. You can't make anyone want to change. So if you have someone in your life right now that, you know, you are on your fitness journey and you're taking care of your health and doing all this and you keep trying to get them to walk through the door, stop. Keep doing you. Lead by example. And if they want to, they will follow. You can't force anyone to change their lives. And that's something I struggled with for the longest time was trying to force people to change. And it would drain me and drain me and drain me. And I highly recommend you don't do that because you need to be putting your energy and effort into something else that's actually serving you. Uh, Because if you continue to strive for personal excellence, the people that you're around right now, they have two options. They're either going to elevate themselves and continue down that path and they might branch off at some point when you keep going or they're just going to sit and, you know, talk shit about you and, you know, say bad things behind your back. And, you know, they're going to not really, you know, try to help you and they aren't going to care because you make them look bad because you're trying to achieve something that they aren't willing to put the work in. Yes, this is all hard. I'm not telling nothing. I'm telling you guys is easy. There ain't no fucking way about it because nothing in my life is easy. I actually make shit a lot harder than it needs to be sometimes. Uh, especially with like working out outside in the middle of winter and stuff like that. As I put myself in all these uncomfortable positions because I know that the more uncomfortable positions I get in, the easier it's going to be when times get tough because I've been through hell. I've put myself in situations that most people don't do. Like when I'm running four miles at five in the morning when it's raining outside and there's not even a car on the road. You know what I'm thinking to myself is there ain't no one else fucking doing this. You're different, Oliver. You're different because you're pushing yourself. You're making yourself do the things that no one else is doing. And that's what creates separation. The reason I'm doing this is simply because most people aren't. And that's what's going to push me further than most people is because I'm willing to do the shit that no one else will do. A quote is, in order to become 1%, you must do what the other 99% of others won't. And that is very true. If you want to go somewhere in life, you want to achieve something great, You have to do what others aren't willing to do. But for this episode, I really want people to just take into consideration, you know, what they're doing with their physical health, what foods they're eating on a daily basis, how much screen time you're spending or how much time you're spending behind a screen on a daily basis and really start to think and create awareness around those things. Am I moving my body every day? Am I putting quality whole foods in my body? How much time am I wasting every single day scrolling through social media endlessly and think looking at all these people's lives and wishing that, you know, my life was like that. Well, I'm going to break it out for you guys. 
Most of the shit you see on f- social media isn't the truth. All these dudes driving Lamborghinis saying, oh, you can do this in this amount of time, make X, Y, Z. Like, you know, I'm never working again. I travel the world. That's all bullshit. And there is a few here and there that actually get to do that. But majority of people are just faking it, faking until they make it. So don't let that get you down because I know that I've caught, gotten caught up looking at someone's page and like, damn, dude, how is this dude fucking killing it? But most of the time, those exotic cars are rented. Those vacations are paid on a credit card. And they're posting only what you want to see. I post shit all the time that shows my vulnerability. Yes, I've had binge eating disorders. Yes, I've struggled with depression. Yes, I've hated a lot of my life. Yes, I hate the old me. But I'm also thankful for the old me because it taught me what I don't want to be. And I will show you. I will show vulnerability because I am no fucking perfect man by any means. I struggle just like the rest of you guys. My life has not been, you know, easy by any means. I haven't had the golden path laid for me. I know people that I grew up with that had their parents, you know, they absolutely went, their parents or their grandparents or great grandparents went through what I'm going through now in order to create something for my future kids, for them to follow in that legacy and be able to achieve greatness. It makes that golden path a lot easier. And I can't take nothing away from those people. I love those people to death. And a lot of them are still my good friends, but They've never had to go through the struggles that I am currently going through because there was that one, the one that Ed Milet talks about that changed the trajectory of their family's future. And I am that one. They already, those people already had the one in their family. So they're set up, but I never had that. And I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday and he was talking about like how he just talked to his grandpa about, you know, We've always worked for someone else. We've always, you know, been a laborer for someone else. We've always been someone else's bitch. When does it stop for our family? He asked him that. And it really had me thinking is like, man, all of my family, my grandpa, my great grandpa, and so forth, they were always someone's bitch. They always worked for someone else. They always went and made someone else money, which nothing wrong with that. You can be an amazing entrepreneur. You can have an amazing life doing that. If you just become valuable enough to create value within that company, that is amazing. There's nothing wrong with that by any means. But for myself, I can't do that. I've already made the decision that I'll never go work for someone else. I'll partner with people. We'll run businesses, stuff like that. But I will never spend my time making another man money or helping another man live his life of his dreams by me putting in eight hours a day and punching out and going home. Yes, I could go that route. I have amazing leadership skills. I have good sales skills. I could do that route and I could make an absolute killing. But what happens, you know, when I retire and my kids and stuff like that, they don't know what they want to do. I want to give my kids an opportunity, an opportunity that they get to decide if they want to follow in their father's footsteps or if there's something else they want to do. Whatever route they choose, they're going to go 100% at it. There is no in-between. You're not going to sit around and pity-patter. You're going to make a decision, and you're going to run with that one. And if they want to go the entrepreneur route and work for an amazing company, so be it. If they want to start their own company and run with it, so be it. But I want to be able to give my family that opportunity because none of my siblings do that. They don't work for themselves. Well, my soon-to-be brother-in-law started his own company after you know 20-plus years of working as an entrepreneur. And finally started that, which is freaking awesome. I love seeing that. Like, that's what fires me up is seeing someone take a risk, take a chance, and be able to go after something compared to the norm. Because the norm isn't what people should be doing. You shouldn't be living the normal lifestyle. You should be living whatever your life calls for, whatever your soul has inside of you. Because if you go to work every day and work in 9 to 5 and you hate your life, What do you think that's going to put onto your kids, your wife, all that stuff? You're going to hate your, you're going to hate your job. You're going to go home and you're going to be upset. You're not going to be, you know, the mother, the father uh, that you're supposed to be. It's very simple. If you are, you know, not happy with where you are right now, you can make a change and you're obligated to make that change no matter what, because you don't want to live a life that isn't worth living, that doesn't bring you happiness and doesn't help your family. You have to be that leader. It is very simple. You are the leader in the family. You are the alpha. You need to lead by example. That is simply the only way to lead. 
You don't lead by telling people what to do. You lead by showing people what to do firsthand, on site, whatever you got to do. That goes with your kids, your wife, you know, at work. If you're a leader in any sort of leadership role, which everyone is, you're a leader to someone, any shape or form. You can always become better at being a leader and continue to strive to become better because you'd be surprised at how many people are watching you. You really will be surprised because, for example, when I first started running, I was running, you know, around the, I live out in the country. I was running like a four mile loop and I'd run that. I ran that for multiple years. This is going on year four now of doing it. And as of last summer, I started to see more and more people walking and stuff like that. And I was like, hmm. I've been living in this area my entire life. And this year, I saw more people out walking, exercising, doing things than I ever have in my life. And I was wondering why. And then one day, I ran into this lady. Never seen her before. She lives a few miles away from me. We started talking. She's like, yeah, I saw you've been running these past few summers and stuff like that. And it really kind of motivated me to start walking and exercising. And right there and then, I realized, like, people are watching, dude. People are always watching what you do, whether you think it or not. Someone's always watching. You're a leader for someone. And just hearing that, she's like, well, th she thanked me for, you know, exercising on a daily basis. Like, well, don't thank me. Like, no, just I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to exercise. I'm supposed to be outside. I'm supposed to do these things. And I'm just thankful that you saw that as an opportunity for you to, you know, start doing something that you know you should be doing. And she's super cool. I actually just saw her the other day walking when I was running. And I said, what's up to her? Said hi. And she's getting after her. And this is summer two of her getting on her walks on a daily basis. And it's freaking awesome. So be that leader. Because someone is always watching. And the best way I've learned to deal with my mental health and stuff like that is knowing deep down that I can always do a little bit better. I can continue to you know strive to become 1% better every day. I can continue to work on myself. And the more I continue to work on myself, the better my mental health is. So I used to say I struggle with depression. I really don't. Everyone uses depression as something along the lines of, yeah, randomly I'll get hit with depression. But when I get hit with depression, it's mainly because I'm not doing as much as I should be or know I should be doing. And so I've really started to fill in these things and find the time where, you know, I need to continue to push forward. I need to do these things. If I catch myself, you know, getting caught up in my head and I feel the so-called depression coming back, I know that I have to keep pushing. I have to get out of my comfort zone. I have to go out and make, you know, something happen. And I feel like that's what most people struggle with is, yeah, they struggle with depression, but they also struggle with not doing shit. They ain't got shit going on and they wonder why they're depressed. It's because you have nothing to work towards. Us as human beings, we are supposed to be building. We are created to build things, whether that be, you know, relationships, family, business, anything. We are builders. We're put on this earth to build things, build ourselves, build up the people around us, build up our businesses, build up our friends, build up things. We are builders. And that's something that, you know, I didn't really realize when I was an actual builder building houses is like, I did enjoy that work, but I didn't enjoy like the physical labor side of it, doing it every single day. I do enjoy building. I do enjoy like doing house projects and stuff like that, but I am a builder. That is who I am. Everyone is a builder. Some people are bigger builders than others. I am here to build things in life. I want to build myself to the absolute best version I can be. I want to build my businesses to dominate. I want to build people to dominate their lives. I am a builder and that is something that's helped me a lot is, you know, building up that mental strength and the mental capacity in my brain is tremendous help because so many people lack it. And it's something like when people ask me, like, how do you do all the things that you do on a daily basis? And it's because I have a tremendous amount of mental strength and discipline Com right now, this day compared to where I was a year ago night and day difference with my mental strength. I don't let things affect me how I used to. I don't respond to situations with emotion. That is like a big thing that has really helped me out a lot in businesses. Don't respond to shit with emotions. Respond to things logically and with facts and knowledge because otherwise you're just responding with emotion and opinion and everyone's got an opinion. So don't use that. Don't use emotions to respond to things. 
Yes, you can use emotions for great things. That is something like stoicism practices is, you know, being in control of yourself, making the most of that situation. And if I have to make a response to a situation, I need to make it logically, not respond with emotion. I need to think it through. Sometimes I'll even take a step back and wait a while. It could be a day. It could be two days. It could be a week before I make that decision because I don't want to respond with emotion. Some people say things to me, whether it be a business partner, friend, family member, and that shit pisses me off so fucking bad that if I were to respond in that moment, all I'm going to do is fucking spark that fire. I'm going to throw gas on it and make it 10 times worse. But if I know I take the time to think about it, let it settle for a couple days, I'll be able to respond logically and make the most of it because... And that's when, you know, things get a lot better is because I simply respond with, you know, facts and knowledge and don't let my emotions control me anymore. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, just becoming older, becoming wise. Like I've had a lot of people uh, say that I'm a pretty wise person and uh, it's actually pretty funny. So this when I was in Vegas, I met this guy. uh, My brother in law is one of his good friends. And the first time I met him. He didn't know what to expect. He'd seen my social media. I, you know, talked a big game in the group chat for this, uh, for this bachelor party. And then when he first met me, he thought I was just gonna be a party animal. All this, this, and this. And then when after you know spending four days with them in Vegas, he made a post and like you know just like a summary of the week and stuff. And he said, "Oliver, you are an animal, man. You are a old soul." wrapped in a Chippendale package. If you guys don't know what a Chippendale is, look it up. It's uh, you know, basically a bunch of just chiseled dudes that dance and stuff in Vegas and basically called me an old soul because he saw me leading by example with me reading every day at the pool, me journaling, me prioritizing, doing some sort of work, working out on a daily basis. And just like him saying that in four days of someone like I don't just talk about this shit, guys. I'm about it. And that is another thing that helps with like your mental health is having confidence. Like me being a confident man is directly correlated to my mental health. I am confident in a lot of areas of my life. Yes, there's areas that I'm not very confident, but that all just comes down to me simply, you know, working at those areas. I won't be confident in absolutely everything in life. I'll never be the best at anything I work towards in life out of anyone in this world. Yes, I'm going to strive to be that way, but there's always going to be people better. And that's something that you have to realize is at the end of the day, you truthfully just have to continue to work towards becoming the best version of yourself. And that ties into the last section that I want to go into about mental health is action steps that you can take that action steps to take to take care of your mental health. And number one, the main thing I want to go over is model good self care habits, which includes, you know, Taking that break in the middle of the day, going for a walk to rejuvenate yourself, bringing you that sense of energy, getting away from that screen or getting away from work. That includes exercising, you know, on a daily basis, whether it be walking, resistance training, all that stuff. Getting enough sleep. If you are continuing continuously getting less than six to eight hours of sleep on a night, it's going to have a negative impact on your mental health. That is very simple. So make sure you're prioritizing sleep. And if you're looking to improve your physical health, number one thing I tell people to do is prioritize their physical health and then their gut health. Those are the two top things that if you get those in order, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to reach whatever physical goals you have. And then exercising on a daily basis, that's, you know, that's just given. You should be doing that no matter what. Next one is eating nutritious meals, which ties into, you know, putting quality whole foods into your body so you get quality whole food energy. That is what it is all about. Good energy in, good energy out. Bad energy in, bad energy out. Simple thing. And one thing I've also noticed when I'm eating healthier foods, I don't have the want to go eat shittier foods because if you eat shit, it's going to make you want to eat more shit. And then another thing that I dove into is, or I haven't really dove into is staying connected with your family and friends. Um, Being connected with them is, you know, unplugging from technology when you're around your family and friends you don't get to be around them all the time especially the older you get because everyone's got their own shit going on so you don't get to see them like you do when you're younger so when you're around your family and friends put the phone away put the screens away have those social interactions be present in the moment and that is something that's helped me out a tremendous amount throughout my journey is just staying present in the moment and i've become more aware of this 
as time goes on, especially when I'm with my family and friends, is simply just staying present in that moment, putting that phone away. It's hard. It's an addictive thing. Being on social social media is programmed to be addictive. They have all this dopamine readily available. Everything is just straight. When you're scrolling, dopamine, 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 dopamine. That's what they want to do. That is what they want. That is so that you stay on social media, which is why when you're scrolling through Reels or TikTok, you blink and an hour of your life is gone. And that is on purpose. They make these things not for social that you it was created back in the day for social interaction for more people to connect now it's made to take your attention away from yourself it is made to take as much of your time as possible so they do whatever they possibly can to keep you on it that same thing goes with like video games and stuff like that they make all this so readily available all these dopamine spikes everyone is addicted to dopamine dopamine is the number one driver for people is everyone's always looking for that next hit of dopamine and back in the day my hit of dopamine used to be drugs alcohol and stuff like that now my next dopamine is working out reading doing things that make me feel good like drugs used to now it is me chasing you know that next high from the workout the next high from that run the next high from that person i helped that next business deal high anything of that nature those are things that serve me because the problem with you know having an addictive personality is it never goes away. It truly never goes away. You just find some sort of you know alternative to become addicted to. Yes, I'll give you a list right now. I'm addicted to working out. I'm addicted to eating right. I'm addicted to self-development. I'm addicted to getting out of my comfort zone. I'm addicted to helping other people. And I've substituted all my bad addictions except for a couple. I'm not perfect. I still do nicotine simple as that i do zen pouches that is you know my downfall nicotine and caffeine two things stimulants that you know definitely pick me up but at the same time i know they're not good for me and i'm working on it guess what i told you guys i am not perfect by any means i still work on myself every single day so with that being said i want to wrap this up guys i know we're going in over an hour so i really do appreciate you guys tuning in because you know mental health has a huge place in my heart and i'm actually going to be building my brand around one to mental health and mental health it all starts with your physical health with the you know the exercise you get on a daily basis the food you put in your body and then which is directly correlated to your mental health so if you're doing good things for your physical health your mental health will take care of itself and that is the number one thing i recommend to you guys is start taking care of your physical health Spend less time on technology. Make sure you're aware of the foods that you're eating on a daily basis. If you don't know where to start, start with 80% quality whole foods, 20% uh, not so good. Very simple. If you guys also want more help in depth with nutrition, physical health, or lifestyle you know, choices, let me know. I'd love to work with you. I'm really trying to change the world one person at a time. So if I have the opportunity to help you change your life, I'm going to go full head, full steam ahead and I'm going to be that best, the best coach I possibly can be for you. And with that being said, I love you guys. Make sure you check in with, uh, you know, make it a goal of yours. Check in with someone that you haven't talked to in a while every single day. Just simply make a phone call, shoot them a text, send them a video, get on a Zoom with them, check in with them, check in with your people because you don't want to be where I was when I was 16 and not have that opportunity to check in with someone that meant the world to you at the time because they're gone now. Don't be like I don't I don't want you guys to live in that type of moment where I had to go through that. I know a lot of people have been through moments like that where someone's gone in a blink of an eye like gone. Don't do that. Check in with your people this month and not just this month, just in general. Start caring more about others and people will start caring more about you. I know when I'm investing into, you know, other people, seeing what they're doing, making sure they're okay, you know, seeing what's going on with them, they care more about me. And that is something that I highly recommend you guys do this month. That is going to be, you know, an actionable step is, you know, reach out to a friend every single day for the rest of this month and make maybe make a habit of it every single every day for the rest of your life. Check in with someone. Your life could change that way. Action step two, get outside, get exercise on a daily basis, get sunlight in right away in the morning, drink water, hydrate, take care of your uh, physical health because it's directly correlated to your mental health, start eating quality whole foods, and start giving back. Um, one thing that um, 
I'm going to start doing is giving back to Habitat for, for Humanity because I said I built houses and I do enjoy doing that thing. I'm going to sign up and, you know, start giving back to my community, building houses for people that need. And that's something that a lot everyone can do. You can always find some sort of time to give back. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be full days at a time. You know, just giving back in little increments can help. And then you can meet awesome people, network, do whatever. But giving back is ultimately, you know, something huge that's going to help. You know, the law of reciprocity, you know, you, you'll get what you give. If the more you give, the more you'll get. Uh, so that's something that's, you know, I've watched firsthand is, you know, the more I tend to give in life, the more I receive. And um, with all you guys listening to my show on a week to week basis, I just want to say thank you guys. Um, I really appreciate that. If you guys could leave me a five star review, uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'm trying to work my way up on the board so I can help impact more people. Um, you know, you never know that you could change someone's life by simply sharing this show with someone, uh, giving them, you know, an outlet you know, to listen to, because some people just don't know where to go from information. There's a lot of misinformation out there and everything I'm sharing with you guys is the truth. All learn firsthand experience. And most of the, like, you know, the facts and stuff I do get from reliable sources. I would never give you guys some bullshit. I'm not trying to uh, manipulate anyone. I'm trying to give you guys the information and steps that you guys can take on a daily basis in order to becoming the best version of yourself. With that being said, Appreciate you guys, and always remember, there is a fresh hope for a better you. I love you.